Yo, what's up, everybody? Since you guys all know it is tax season, I want you guys to know that today's sponsor is brought to you by Magnolia Tax Services. If you're a business owner or a high-earning individual, take control of your finances with the tailored tax planning services of Magnolia Tax Services. Their team of certified public accounts and enrolled agents specializes in maximizing savings for individuals and businesses by utilizing the latest tax laws and strategies. From complex business structures to high net worth individuals, they'll develop a customized plan to minimize your tax liability and increase your bottom line. Don't leave money on the table. Contact our partners at Magnolia Tax Services today for a consultation and get a $100 credit towards your service by clicking the link in the show notes. That's right, guys. Like I said in the beginning, it is tax season, so you want to make sure you tap in with my guys at Magnolia Tax Service today. And once again, that link is in the show notes, and now we'll get right into the show. Gotta get your brain right if you're trying to make a million dollars If you ain't gonna do it for yourself, then do it for your mama Only stay surrounded by them people if you know they solid Elevate your hustle up today to double up your profit Trying to learn some game, Xavier gonna talk about it No Deanna, speak that sh** that everybody voucher Ain't no more excuses valid, get up off the couch and get up in your bag To your bank account, need an accountant Yo, 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 welcome back to the greatest show on earth, the Million of Mindsets podcast. I am your host, Xavier, and today I got another, another great legendary episode happening right now, so make sure y'all tap into this one. But before we start the show, I would like to advise all the listeners, also all the watchers, to please subscribe, leave that five-star rating, review, share, like, do all those things, because we're trying to run those numbers up, y'all. But getting right into the show, so I got another, another, another special guest, man. And uh, this guy who I have on today, he he was our guest for our first live podcast event we did. So this is our first time getting him in the studio in Dallas, and this is going to be another crazy episode. But a crazy story before we start this episode is how we found out we from the, pretty much the same neighborhood, went to the same school, yeah. had the same <laughs> teachers, all without that. even all that, yeah, without all even that. fucking knowing, never just met each other, never met person. each other in person. But we got met, so much in common, got hella shit in common. <laughs> I'm like, man, it's cur- it, it goes to show how small the world is. So I'm super, super excited to have him on the show, and this is my guy Andre Haynes. Welcome to the show, brother. Man, appreciate you for having me on, man. It's yeah. been a minute since we did that first been, one. The sound yeah. didn't quite work out for that one, so like now we back official, and I'm excited to be on with you. Hey, bro, man, I'm ex- I'm excited to have you. Like I said, when we when we I remember when we did the because you was here for the Henry episode, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You was here for Henry episode, yeah. and I think it was like after that we was just chopping it up. Cause he's like, you know, you find out somebody from the same city as you. He was like, all right, whatever. You from, from the same town? That's what's up. Then you find out we, we from what? Same neighborhood, same grade school, school, grade school, school. Same teachers taught us all that. Yeah, it was <laughs> I real, said, what the fuck, yo? Yeah, this real is, small, this real, is real small, small world, man. man. So, so getting right into it for the people who this may be their first time seeing you or hearing you, just give some uh, brief background on yourself. Uh, again, my name is Andre Haynes. I'm from the South Side of Chicago. Uh, the Ida B. Wells Projects. Um, I'm a real estate investor, entrepreneur, content creator, shit, author. Everything that, you know what I mean, God got for me, I'm out here doing that shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? For real, for real. Yeah. And, um, it ain't been an easy path, but, you know, we done made it and we here. You know? yeah, yeah, that's love, man. That's love. So talk about, because I, I, I know what you're doing. You're going crazy in, in real estate. The brand going crazy. Everything going great, going crazy. But you've been living, break this down, you've been living rent-free for how yeah. long? Since 2015. Yeah, damn near eight years. He been living rent free for <laughs> eight years, y'all. Yeah. Rent free. So yeah. break it, break that down. Like, how have you been able to do this for this long? Um, I, I took advantage of this program called NACA, um, okay. Neighborhood Assistance Corporations of America, and NACA is a program that allows you to purchase property up to four units. It could be mixed use, you know, what I mean, it could be a single family home, condo, whatever the case may be, um, with some amazing, amazing benefits. Um, the best benefit is no money down. You also got no closing costs. You also have no agent or attorney fees. You're also offered the lowest interest rate in the country, regardless of what your credit score is. Uh, there's no what? PMI. Um, yeah, man, it's just like the best shit going. And, um, you know, I was blessed enough to find out about it and to be able to take advantage of the program. And I'd be only able to take advantage of the program once, but I did it twice. Mm. Yeah. And so can anybody use this program? Anybody can use the program. Yeah. Anybody. Anybody. So what the, what the hell people ain't, like, what the hell? How people ain't using this? Like, how, how did you find out about it? Uh, a uh, uh, big sister of mine, a mentor of mine, man. Um, I had kind of, you know, so for most of my younger years, teenage years, I was chasing a music dream. Um, you know, I was a rapper. Um, I was yeah, meeting I with, I was, I, meet, I was, yeah, I was meeting with labels. You know, my homie, uh, 
multi-platinum producer was producing all my records i had nba money behind me you know two songs on the radio on our major stations in chicago at the same time boy but that shit still would not pop right like it just wouldn't pop for me it just wasn't what god had for me and um i kind of had to recalibrate and just you know step away from music and just reevaluate my life because it was at a point well, you know, I found myself, I had two daughters, I was behind on rent, eviction notices on my door, all of these things. But I'm um, like, you know, living this facade in front, like I really got it popping out here in music videos and, you know, doing all of this shit whole time, bro. Like I'm fucked up. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I had to, like I said, recalibrate, you know, do some self-evaluation and be like, no, nah, this ain't it. So I went and got a job, right? And that job is what essentially like started digging me out of the hole because I was able to work extra hours, save money and all of that. And in that process, I went through damn near a depression, you know what I'm saying? Because I went from, you know, like my friends play NBA ball, Shannon won championships with Kobe D on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like I was yeah. associated with some real hitters from the crib. Mm -hmm. And um, for me to be able to like, you know, go from that. And mind you, when I was rapping, I'm doing shows opening up for, you know what I mean? Fat Joe, you know what I mean? Young Jock when he popping, T.I. sitting next to Jay-Z and Beyonce at basketball games, just like really going crazy, like how it looks, right, you know what I'm saying? Right, but right. when it come to time to for the checks to come in, wasn't no money coming in, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I had to really sit down, like I say, and go figure out a way to make money and dig myself out of this hole that I had dug, trying to, you know what I mean, act like I really had it cracking when I didn't. And um, in that process, bro, like, I went through a depression, and in that depression, I'm just like, yo, like, this ain't it. I can't let this be, like, just, like, you know, my my end-all, be-all, you know? So I started looking up, you know, in my cubicle while I'm working because I ended up going to get a job at a call center. I'm like, man, how do regular people who work jobs get rich? And I kept coming across real estate in the stock market, real estate in the stock market. And one of the um, articles that I came across brought up the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I saw it on sale on Amazon for like $2.99 at the time it was used. And it was like, man, it's the best business book in the world, et cetera, et cetera. So I just ordered it. And um, it came like the next day, you know what I mean? And I'm like, all right, cool. This is going to be my start. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to read this book in my cubicle. And man, when I opened the book, bro, like I couldn't stop reading it. Like mm -hmm. it just like the whole day, like I'm ignoring phone calls. My manager's like, Andre, you pick up the phone. You know, motherfuckers on the phone, like, hello, hello. I'm like, man, I ain't trying to hear none of that shit. Like, I mean, like, the, the information was just feeding me. Like, and I'm just like, damn, this shit's so powerful. This shit's so fire. Assets over liabilities, you know what I'm saying? Like, mindset, like, understanding that you in control over your own time and your life as long as you not putting nobody else in. Like, just, you know what I'm saying? Just understanding, like, man, like, as long as you got a boss, you will never be, like, you know what I mean? The person that you want to be and where you want to go. And just, like, giving me all of these different concepts that just really, like, gave me a mindset shift. And from there, I'm just like, man, like, I got a lot of changes to make and um, just started really, after that book, Money Master the Game, I learned about, like, financial literacy, the book Tony Robbins wrote. Um, in addition to that, um, Seven Spiritual Laws of Success by Deepak Chopper, which got my spiritual life in order, like, you know what I mean? Stop stressing and worrying about shit so much. So all of these things combined kind of, like, put me in position to where I started saving money, you know what I'm saying? I started getting my mind right. And I started doing the things that I needed to do to get out of this depression and change my life. Mm. And when I did that, I reached out to, like I say, a big sister of mine, a mentor of mine named Kyoki. And I told her, and she was a broker. And um, I'm like, man, I'm ready to buy a house. And she's like, man, that shit sound cool, but like, you really need to go get you a multi-unit because you really like don't need to be taking on debt. Like you're mm -hmm. in a position where you're trying to like, you know what I mean, go up, go like up. not really be like, you know, stagnant. stagnant. And buying a house is gonna keep you stagnant because you already a job you don't like. You know what I'm saying? Now this house is gonna force you to have to keep this keep job this because job. it's a mortgage for 30 years. Yep. Like once you like you locked in, it's 30 years. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And at any given time, your bills do or whatever, you gotta run to this job. You know gotcha. what I'm saying? So she's like, look, go get you a multi-unit. And it clicked because it was essentially the same thing that I read in Rich Dad, Poor Dad not long ago. So a light bulb went off and she gave me the place. She's like, go through this program called NACA. And she told me about all the benefits that I just said. And I went through it, bro. I got my first property in a nice ass neighborhood in Chicago called Forest Park. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Right yeah, next to yeah. Oak Park, That's right outside nice the city. Like you got buses, you got trains, mm -hmm. you got shopping, you got churches, you yep. everything that you need and could be considered like valuable or a great amenity for a tenant. I had it. So I got me a four unit, bro. One of the units was available. I moved in, but all the other three, they had tenants and they were already paying. So at my job, bro, I'm making like twenty six thousand dollars a year at the taxes, like below the I'm below the poverty line essentially. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm in, in I'm, Chicago. I'm impoverished. You yeah. know what I'm saying? 
So this program allowed me to qualify for this property. Not only did I not put no money down on this property, bro, I walked away from the closing table with a $5,000 check. Oh. So I kept all my money. Right. The 15 brands that I saved, I got $5,000. In addition to that, I got my check from my job the day that I closed. In addition to that, I closed at the end of the month. So the three tenants that was living there all paid their rent at the same time the next day. Lit. So I went from making $26,000 a year to having $26,000 cash in my account after doing my first real estate deal with the NACA program. In one day. In one day. In one day. And it was because of this program. And the program is amazing. Like I said, I was able to buy because... How they qualify you is is not based on your income when it comes to multi-units. With multi-units, if people are already living there in the property cash flow, they'll take money that the building generating already and then add it to the income that you make. And so, for example, let's say the mortgage on the property is three thousand dollars. Let's say you only make you make what you make two thousand dollars, right? But let's say the cash flow from the property is four thousand dollars. So they'll take seventy-five percent of the building's income, which is $3,000, that's 75% of 4,000, add that to your income, right? Now you make $5,000 and the mortgage is $3,000. Now the property is way more than affordable more for you. Affordable. On top of that, you still got cash flow left over at the end of the month of $2,000. Damn. Yeah, and that's, that's how they qualify changer, you bro. for a multi-unit. They don't do this with single family homes because single family homes don't produce cash. Yeah, don't, right. And when I found this out, I'm like, swear. And that's when I like really like went into the multi-unit game and really like, yo, this is a this is this is game changing right here because now I don't have to come off so much and I'm not responsible for so much because my tenants gonna take care of everything for me. And then by me using this program, they give me all of these amazing benefits. So now I'm walking into equity. I'm keeping cash. Now I can go out and invest in more properties, start businesses, invest in the stock market, which is what I did. And the crazy thing is, after I did that, bro, I put money in the stock market for about three years. And at the time, I was taking my girl to me, like with all my meetings to me, you know what I'm saying? And um, my guy, my mortgage counselor, he was like, man, like y'all serious? I'm like, yeah, we serious. You see she here with me. I'm talking my social security number, how much money I got saved, everything. Hell right. yeah, we serious. He's like, well, what you do is, is you bring her back and y'all get another one. Cause y'all not married and you can do that. You can do it. Yeah, yeah. and uh, we went back. A few years later, and with me knowing the program and everything, this particular time, bro, I went big. So now the first one was in Forest Park, which is a really good neighborhood. That's a neighborhood. That's real. This time we we went to Wicker Park. <laughs> we, went, we, went to, we went to Bucktown because I started like I learned the program. That three years, I went through the process. I had a relationship with my mortgage counselor. I built a relationship with people at the front desk, and I just knew everything that I could do. So now, the in this program. The more units that you apply for, that's the more money that you qualify for. So they got a max. Like on a single family home, it's two hundred and fifty thousand. On a two unit, it might be four hundred thousand. On a three unit, it might be six fifty. But on a four unit, they'll give you up to nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars to go purchase you a four unit, as long as the numbers and everything fall in line. And I knew this, and I'm like, oh well, what I'm finna do is. I'm finna go up here where these high rent areas are at, where motherfuckers paying eighteen, nineteen, two thousand dollars for a one bedroom apartment, and I'm gonna use that money to qualify for this million dollar mortgage that we finna go get. You know what I'm saying? On top of that, I say I knew the interest rate by down. I know you can get sellers concessions up to ten percent or whatever the loan is. So I can, if I'm looking at a property for nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars, I can ask the seller ninety for ninety five thousand dollars in closing costs if I want to. And that's how I ended up getting the $5,000 on my first property because I had a seller's concession and I didn't need to use it all. Right. So I bought the interest rate down to 2.5% with some of the money and the rest of the money came back to me. Wait, wait, hold on. This is, you, you get, you're giving out too much game. Bro. Let's, take, <laughs> let's, 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 uh, let's take it back uh, a little bit. So how long, let's go back to the first one. Mm -hmm. How long, when you found out about the NACA program, you, uh, you, you had to apply for it? Yeah. So how long was that process from application to actually closing? It went from December to May. That's quick. Yeah. People think it takes so long and whatever the case may be. And a lot of the hiccups was me. Like, really? I didn't have my paperwork in order. You know, I'm pushing back. They telling me they need stuff. They, like, might have, you know, needed a document more than once. And you know how, it, like, us right, as right. niggas is. We just, I don't want y'all all in my business, all that. But you trying to get a $400,000 property from me for nothing. Like, 
like I gotta be all in your business. Like we need to understand how mortgage processes go, how credit works, like all of these different things instead of you know what I'm saying, freaking out and getting anxiety about stuff because we not used to people being in our business yeah. and we talk, don't tell nobody how much money you got. Now this is the bank. You need these people. Why wouldn't you want to build a relationship? Why wouldn't you want to tell them your business? Because once you tell them your business, they're going to tell you what you need to do to come and get some money from them. You know, that's so funny because now that you say that, because motherfuckers will tell everybody else all they business. All they business. And they got no good intentions for them. <laughs> when the bank asks, they like, all these Hey, why they want to be all in my business? Why they want to know about my taxes and all that? Like, bro, like, because you coming to ask these people for a half a million dollars, what you thought it was going to be? Facts. Like, oh. like if you if you went to borrow a half a million dollars for your auntie or your uncle right now, they're going to look at you like you crazy. Like, boy, fuck out my face. For real. The bank is going to give you a chance. Like, okay, this is what you need in order to get this money. You can't do that anywhere else. No, you can't. That's facts. That's a hell of a way to put it. Where else you going to go get this kind of money from? And even if somebody were to give it to you, you know how black people, like, when are you going to have my money back? I need this. No, this I need is like, it's right. just like, you know on what I'm saying? It's, they going to be on your ass. And the bank the same way. The you bank right. the same way, except for they not going to be calling you, harassing oh, you. As long as you're making your monthly payments on time, you ain't going to have no worries with these people because they got interest on this loan and you paying them over time for them lending you this money. And that's another reason why I like the NACA program because it allows you to chip away and buy down your interest on top of them already giving you the lowest interest rate in the country, bro. Do you know how much money people pay in interest alone on properties right. when you're talking about 600, 700, right. 800 thousands of dollars? What they say, like those first 10, 15 years, you it's just, all interest. It's all interest. You it's all that. interest. So we talking like we buying properties for 400,000, 879,000 dollars. Boy, on my second property that cost 879,000 dollars, the interest rate normally was three and a half percent. We bought it down to 0.8 percent. We used 70,000 dollars to buy that down. And those points over 30 years saved me about a half a million dollars, bro. 70000 saved me a half a million over a 30-year term. That's some crazy shit. Like, and people don't realize how interest That's rates right, work, right, like, and how don't. much money you're actually paying because you see a small number, 3%, 4%, 2%. Bro, those so small little. numbers <laughs> on big-ass numbers add up to a lot. No, like a lot like I, like imagine right. like would you want one percent of a billion dollar deal hell, hell yeah you know yeah. how much money that is like it's one percent it seems small but it's a billion yeah. dollars though no effects like, you're right when people, buy, <laughs> like, when people buy homes they definitely they should always just three percent like bro that's a, lot of that's, money. that's a lot of money over a 30 year term that's a whole lot of money bro <laughs> like, a whole lot like of you see what money. i'm saying and these people gave me the opportunity not only to take care of a lot of that shit up front but they offered me the lowest interest rate in the country already. You know what I'm saying? And that was amazing to me, bro. Like, it was a no-brainer for me. Yeah, they got a lot of rules or whatever. You have to live in the property for the life of the loan. You know, stuff like that. Right. You got to tell people about the program. But for me, I'm a logical person. All right, I got to live there for the life of the loan. That's cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take advantage of this program to go buy me the nicest motherfucking property I can. So can. I'll live there. And all of this money that I just saved with closing costs and interest and all that, I'm going to use that money to invest exactly. in other neighborhoods. Exactly. that I don't necessarily want to live in or that's exactly. going to generate cash flow or whatever. So use the NACA program to go get you the biggest, the best, nicest, whatever you can get with that shit. Live there for as long as you can and go invest somewhere else because these people just saved you a shitload of money and you got a big ass bag sitting right here after you close so you can go do whatever you want to do with it. So it shouldn't be no reason like, oh, hi, if I got a lid of how I'm going fast, y'all be so caught up in BRRR and flipping right. all fast. You don't even know how that shit. You got to qualify for all that shit. You right. can't just go BRRR shit like, nigga, do you have enough money to refinance this shit? Like, do you know the terms of a refinance? Like, do you know what any of this shit right. really means? Because you just so caught up with these internet terms. So, yeah, I'm going to go get me a folk unit. Then I'm going to move out of one. Then I'm going to BRRR that bitch. Then I'm going to fix and flip the next one. Then I'm going to go get me some mobile homes. It's like, nigga, y'all sound crazy. No facts. Because you got five thousand dollars and you trying to do all this shit. <laughs> like, like that's really how like, people be, bro. Like, like, bro, you got five bands. How you finna Sit go up. start a trucking company? Get you a four unit, <laughs> a clothing brand, and go get you motherfucking uh, Amazon stock. <laughs> like, you feel me? And this is how niggas be talking. Like, they just really finna go crazy, and they be like, bro, like y'all not logical human beings. Like, 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 <laughs> 
<laughs> like, do you really like? Have you uh, ever done a deal? Like, have you no, ever done a deal? No. Like, do you know anybody that's ever done a deal? You can't because how you talking, bro? Like, it's delusional. Like, <laughs> oh my god, bro! Like, no, for like, cause niggas be throwing these terms around, like, yeah, I'm gonna do, like, bro, I swear to God, it's not gonna work out like that for you. Like, I've been in this shit eight years. It ain't like that. Like, nigga, I'm just now able to be able to go pull equity out of my properties because I'm doing nigga shit, like, writing off everything on my taxes. So Thanks. now, again, when I try to go to the bank, the you people be. that I need money from, they like, you they broke. like nigga, you broke on paper. Yep. Because yep. you want to write everything off. But again, you hear them, yeah, you go get you the G-Wagon, you write that motherfucker off. And mm. It's like, bro, how? You know how much money you have to make to write off a G-Wagon? Facts. People don't talk about that shit, though. Like, Nick, they, like you, they will send you off. Like you don't, you have no clue. Where, you have to make money to write something off. Like, and you have to make way more, more money than, than what you're writing off for that shit to even factor in and count. No, that's facts, bro. And they'd be like, I just be listening to motherfuckers, like, bro. So when I be talking about the NACA program as the easiest way to get started in real estate, you know what I mean? For a person that's coming from, you know what I mean? A little bit of nothing, you want to get started, like, and a motherfucker be like looking at me, like, nah, I'm straight. That's a government assisted program. That's the man NACA that made me a millionaire, boy. Fuck is you talking about? Damn. Like with the with the with the smallest amounts of money, with the lowest interest rates in the country, like this shit is logic. Do what makes the most, the most sense. sense. Bro, like, I don't operate in emotion. I operate in logic. I'm a grown-ass man. I'm going to do what makes the most sense for me and my family at all times. So why would not go through a program that gives me no closing costs, no down payment, the lowest interest rates in the country, no PMI, which is just extra money that you giving to a motherfucker for 30 years because they don't trust you with this loan. Oh, right. Like, on top of origination fees that you don't know about, all of this different money that when you go to the closing table, you're going to be sick. These people going to be like, yeah, all right, cool. You got your $40,000 check. I'm like, $40,000? $40, like, nigga, it took me 35 years to save this money. And now I got to give it to you and don't even, most of this shit don't even go towards the equity in my property. Because a lot of this shit just fees. Yeah, exactly. And that can wipe all, all that shit out. Bro, you just, you, you, hey, you giving, you giving too much. But I want to, I got two things first. When you talked about that writing off stuff, I know from experience, bro, 2018 was my first year in business. I probably made like around like 150000 Listening to people on the internet, I wrote everything <laughs> off I could possibly write, write off, bro. No bullshit. I'm right. I'm, I'm right. Write all that shit off. I'm telling my people write all of it off. Comes, I'm, tr I'm trying to buy this property. But I'm like, I don't want to use my bread. I'm going to just get this little loan. It was only like a $20,000 yeah. loan. Some look, some light they shit. They, with they looked at my shit. They said, bro, you ain't make no money. <laughs> I said, hold on. What you mean I make no money? I'm, I'm like, oh, it's because I wrote everything yeah. off. I said, yeah. bro, what the fuck? Yeah. Since then, I ain't never did that shit again, bro. So that is Yeah, hey, like if you don't, If facts. you don't pay taxes, you're broke. You, like that, Like that's, that's when motherfuckers be getting tax returns and all that shit, like, bro, like you broke. No, you weren't no, supposed to get that. No like, facts. Motherfuckers who make money, they pay taxes. Hey, bro. Like, you, like ain't, you ain't lying, bro. This is the truth. Like, so, like, when I be hearing motherfuckers be talking this shit, and like, I just be like, bro, like, y'all really don't know nothing about business, money, no, credit, facts. just none of this shit for real. Y'all just real live internet niggas. If you, if, if you really, if you, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? All your information comes strictly off the internet. No experience, no, no. like, you no. know what I'm saying? No mentorship, <laughs> no big homies, just you just out here. Picking up clips <laughs> off the internet and going to repeat them shit. No facts. If you you ain't lying, bro. If you really making bread when the tax season comes, you not really looking forward Man, to this I'll shit. Be, boy, be I like, be I get, get the done. last day of the season. I keep my account like, yeah, I got all this shit for you. You ready for it? Like she so, like, I've been waiting on you for three months. Like I ain't like, in no rush to give you no fucking, fucking money. money. Hell no. People no money. Fuck that. Fuck no. No, you not. You not. You. <laughs> we doing this shit the last day. When the last day we could do this shit. Like <laughs> you got me fucking crying, bro. But you not. You speak at all. Oh, like, it's just, man, like I'm a, just, I'm a realist, bro, and a lot of people just aren't realistic about just like their goals and what they really want to do because if they were, they would understand like this shit is a real process. You know what I'm saying? Like overnight successes take ten years, nigga. Facts. Like the niggas who you thought made it overnight, like Glorilla. Like, nigga, she was in Memphis doing all the dance and all that shit way before y'all knew who she was. Like, that shit didn't just come from nowhere. She been rapping. Straight like, up. it's motherfuckers that's been putting in work for years. You just, you just don't, don't know, know just because they're them. not on a big scale just yet. Like, when you see them, now they've blown up. You've seen the hard work paying off. What you're seeing is the results of a motherfucker grinding and putting in work. So now you want to emulate that. But you didn't see her when she was fucked up in the projects, probably in her bedroom closet, motherfucking recording on a weak-ass mic or 
you know what I'm saying? Like what Rick Ross said, you weren't with me when I was no, shooting in the gym. gym. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like these are the things that people need to try to emulate the process, the actual work that's put in, like emulate the hard shit. It's easy to go out and make it seem like you doing some shit that you really not doing Facts. because you can go buy an outfit and take a couple of pictures. But nigga, have you ever like really went through this shit? Have you ever taken a loss, nigga? Have a motherfucking roof issue ever happened to you? Have a tenant ever called you and told you that motherfucking water leaking or they toilet motherfucking squirting out? Like it just like have you ever experienced any of this real life shit? Because if you did, you wouldn't be talking like how you are. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's facts. That's like, facts. and I don't be getting how motherfuckers just be so rah, 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 rah. And they just be like, bro, this information you talking about fraudulent as hell. It's and they be so loud and vocal <laughs> with it too. Like, like. No, that's, that's facts. <laughs> and you be watching, you be seeing this yeah, shit. Yeah, like, and when you know better, it just be like, motherfuckers believe in this shit, shit too. Like, this niggas out here believe in this shit. No, facts. You ain't lying. Oh, this shit crazy. It's like, you it's know a, what I'm saying? It's a lot of fraudulent Information being thrown out yeah, these man. days, and yeah. you just you from a this you just see and you be like, damn, somebody yeah. gonna fall for this shit and finna go through the ringer yeah. fucking with this shit, right? You ain't lying, bro. Yeah. That's fact. Yeah, and before and before y'all think y'all can go get two properties with NACA, you can't. You really can only go get one. So the I way was, that I finesse the program is, you know what I'm saying? Like I say, I had my girl. We took her back and did another one. You know, by her using her name. I'm just like, fuck it. I'll give you the bread or whatever the case may be. I'll fuck with you. We in this shit long term. I love you. Let's rock out. You know what I mean? So I gave her the bread. She listened. She ran the play the right way. So now you have assets of a half a million dollars because you listened to your nigga. I gave mm. you the bread. She like, shit, nigga, I'm going to put you on a deed for ownership. So if anything ever happens to me, now you the property it. goes to you. Mm -hmm. It won't go to my mama, it won't go to my sister, it won't go to my daddy, it goes to you now. And if I sell it, you're going to get half the money. the money. And that's all legal. It's a loophole. Perfectly legal. And we jump through that motherfucker. But just from, but just from listening, though, it's a lot of hard-headed motherfuckers out here that would have just made it. You told them that, motherfuckers, just go left. Go left. Now they want to, they go, they still going to go get a single family home together. Right. Like, <laughs> like I just gave y'all the play on how to get rich. No fact. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but now y'all so stuck on looking a certain kind of way with your mom and them saying, like, what you want to post on the internet. Oh, I need more space. I need this. No, nigga, you need money. You need cash flow. You need steady income. You need a motherfucking cash flow and asset that's going to increase in value over time. And you need a motherfucker that's going to pay your mortgage for you so you can keep your job and take all that money and go invest into more property, more business businesses more education to make yourself better and to grow your family legacy like you know what i'm saying like this is the play but motherfuckers don't want to do it because they want to look a certain kind of way like this shit don't always look good no i don't it don't always look good but at the end of the day just knowing that you set up and you straight for the rest of your life that shit feels amazing yeah. though it don't look good but it feels amazing it, it that's that's a bar because once you once you understand that um fuck how would it look like what it felt like I always used to say, like, man, the fact that I can go to Dubai right now, but I'm good, I could just chill, yeah. is enough for me. Yeah. The fact that yeah. I can that I do can, it though. Yeah. is enough, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, th that desire of doing all these random ass things kind of go away when you can actually do it, for yes, real. Sir. And then, too, like I say, bro, I didn't live. Like, bro, like, I didn't, like I say, went to Final Four games. Like, I didn't been backstage at Jay-Z concerts. I didn't shook hands with Kobe Bryant. Like, right. I didn't did all this shit. And I was young when I was doing this shit. Like, I was... Dead ass broke, fucked up, like just riding my homie's coattail while I was doing this shit. But at the end of the day, it gave me exposure. It let me know all this shit was possible. possible. I remember we 17 years old. We playing motherfucking Madden with LeBron James, Rich, and Mav. Like just like these are the people that I'm around, sitting around. And me coming from the projects, bro, like this shit is like amazing to me because I didn't even know none of this shit was possible. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's what gave me my, my hustle and my grind because it's like, yo, it's a whole lot of fucking possibilities out here. And I just got to figure this shit out. And a lot of times we lack information in our communities. So what we do is we go to the TV, we go to the radio and we emulate that, which is a lot of sports, a lot of entertainment, a lot of rap, like, you know what I'm saying? But now there's a whole new thing with us coming in, you, EYL, Byron, you know what I'm saying? Henry, BWR, all of the guys that's like pretty much creating a new role model for the black community, for the minority communities, like, yo, Y'all don't got to be rappers and ball players to be cool and get money out here. Right. You can really be one of them guys, have your own business, et cetera. And I, the, the example that I always give is, yeah, it's cool to want to be LeBron, but imagine a dude that's paying LeBron. Mm -hmm. 
Imagine how much he making if he can get LeBron $600 million. Nike can pay LeBron a lifetime contract. How much money they made off, dude? How much money Phil Knight actually got so he can get this nigga this much money? Get a nigga a billion dollar contract. How you able to give a motherfucker a $250 million contract? Nigga, how much money you got? And you, you got 12 people on your team that you paying this kind of money to. Right, LeBron, he ain't the only one. Yeah, like, so I was like, I want to be that guy. How do I become him? You know what I'm saying? That's what I need more kids in our communities to start thinking like and feeling like and wanting to be like. Like, yeah, it's cool to want to be the niggas on TV, but you never see the CEOs at the business for real. Never. You never see them there. Mm -hmm. You never really see the owners of the team at the game. Every so often, you might catch Mark Cuban sitting on the sideline or, you know what I'm like saying, Steve Ballmer. But yeah. it is rare that you see the owners of the teams at the games. It is. And if so, they tucked away in their box and were not even on camera. They not, they not looking for no fame. They, not, they trying to check their bag. And that's what we need these young kids in our communities and motherfuckers to see and want to be like and emulate those people. Mm. And it, again, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be LeBron. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be an athlete. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be a rapper. But at the end of the day, have aspirations to take that money and become the people who pay those people. Mm, right. Ownership, equity. Ownership, equity, mm -hmm. that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Bro, I love it, bro. But let, let me ask you this. So somebody that's watching this, they're hearing that because they're like, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Where do they go to to even apply for this program? So you go to their website, www.naca.com, and um, it's, uh, I think, a four-hour seminar you got to do real quick. And, uh, you know, they break down everything for you, tell you all about the program. And then you kind of like, you know, go and register and let them know when you'll be ready to meet with a mortgage counselor. And when you meet with your mortgage counselor, you know, that's when, the, you know, the background checks start, the bank statements, you know, the, the thorough investigation they're going to do to make sure that your ass is able to qualify and pay for a property. Mm -hmm. And um, when you go, your ass better be ready because they sticklers about their documents. They sticklers about, you know what I mean, having check stubs in. They sticklers about having bank statements in. They sticklers about everything because essentially, like I said, they're giving you something for nothing. They're changing your life for nothing, Literally. bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? And um, I try to teach people to learn real estate before you go get a mortgage, like, really? period. Because a lot of people, what they do is they know that they can get a mortgage. They know that they can qualify for a mortgage, but they don't know anything about real estate. So now what you're doing is you're putting the people who are supposed to be your partners, like your agent, your attorney, your mortgage counselor. Now you're putting them in charge of your deal. You don't have no control anymore. You asking them everything. You looking for them to do everything. You want them to, you know what I mean, do all the work. Thanks. When that, when whole time, y'all supposed to be partnering right. and working together. You supposed to be quarterback and running the play. Like, hey, I like this property over here. Can you write up a contract for it? Hey, attorney, can you look and see if it's anything going on as far as, like, inspections or, you know what I mean, anything like water bills, any of that kind of shit. Like, you know what I mean, mortgage counsel. Hey, let me know what I need to do to qualify for this place. Like, give me a, a, a qualifying letter, like, approval letter. Like, you know what I mean? Work your team. You shouldn't be just sitting back waiting on people to call you telling you what to do. And a lot of people just go into real estate and not have no real education in real estate. And that's why a lot of motherfuckers be out here getting slaughtered and killed in this game because they just think it's sweet when it's not. Mm, not it ain't sweet at all. At all. You, you, you definitely will get slaughtered in real estate. You don't know what the fuck you're doing. Yeah, so you go to the NACA program, and I also um, I host a, a, a webinar monthly where I pretty much, you know, I teach my play. Like, where, you know what I'm saying? Um, www.navigatenaca.com, or you can uh, follow me on social at Renaissance125, and, you know, I always post the links and, you know, just post videos just about the program and teaching about the program and stuff like that. But, yeah, man, um, I created the webinar because it pretty much teaches all the stuff that NACA can't teach and don't teach because, you know, when you go to a lender or whatever the case may be, their job is strictly to qualify you. They can't lead you in a particular direction. They can't teach you real estate. They can't tell you the kind of deal you should be looking for. So how else do you know? Like, you know what I'm saying? Especially if you don't even know where to start with education. So me, I give you the NACA play on top of, like, just giving you some general level real estate information to help you be able to understand how this is going to work, how you should be trying to manage your property, the mindset that you need to have, all of these different things inside of my um, webinar. And um, the crazy thing is, NACA love me. Like, them people love me. Not like, bad. they fuck with me, like, hard. Like, I've pretty much become 
like their like biggest their ambassador. ambassador. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And um, they be taking my videos, reposting them on their page, telling me like, man, bro, keep going. We love what you're doing, all of that. So at some point, I'm going to be looking for a check from them people. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, but yeah, man, um, I more so, any more than anything, I enjoy just giving the information to people and seeing people change their lives with it because I get so many DMs and so many testimonials about, man, bro, like, I'm so glad you told me about this program. It changed my life. I told my mama about it. She went and got her problem through NACA like it's just like I got people just like c coming from out of town to my events to hug me and just I man bet, bro I, I bet, really bro. like just you know what I'm saying because like this shit is saving people so much money you know what I'm saying and it's information that's not known people don't know about yeah, this shit know. like and I've been in this shit for eight years and this shit been out since like 1990 really? and people still don't know about it people still don't know about it how much money do you need to have saved ideally to do this I would say save about three and a half percent of the uh, the cost of the property that you're looking for. And it's not for like, you know, closing costs or any of that. But when it comes to real estate, a lot of people hear me say no closing costs, no money down, all that. But there's still stuff that you have to pay. If you have to pay your tax, you have to pay your insurance. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like there are things you're going to have fees to pay for, but you're not going to have all of the shit that you had to pay for with an original deal with FHA right. or a conventional loan or something like that. Like the breaks that these people give you is amazing. Like with any deal, you're going to have things that you got to come out of pocket for, but with them, it ain't the same. Mm, that's Yo, this uh, this is life changing because, like you said, you started, you was at a job, you was making twenty six thousand dollars a year, got in the NACA program, closed on the property, made twenty six thousand in a day, in a day, became a millionaire from the NACA. How long did it take you from when you your first property to becoming a millionaire? Twenty fifteen to twenty eighteen, three like, years. Yeah, because the second one was worth a M when we bought it, and the uh, one that I had, it had, it was worth like. A half of M because you know it went up like went pandemic up. shot everything up, yep. and I had my building shit 2015. So I had regular equity and a pandemic equity baked into my shit, like you know what I'm saying. So yeah, man, um, that put me at like 1.5 net worth, and you know, like I say, over time, the mortgage been getting bought down, the property values have gone up, gone like up. it just cash flow been coming in steadily monthly, and that's another thing that I I love about multi units. You get so many different benefits, right? So you get the cash flow. You get the tax benefits, you get the 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 equity and appreciation, you know what I mean? And you get the the mortgage buy down from the tenants. And all of this shit goes to you in your pocket. So now you've collected rent and cash flow for 30 years. 12 times 30, whatever number that is, and then like multiply that times however much cash flow you've been making. And every year you're able to give yourself a raise because you can go up on the rent. You're right. On top of that, somebody else then paid your mortgage down. Now when you sell it, all of this money is coming to you and you didn't spend a dime, especially in my situation. I didn't spend a dime. So when I sell this shit, it's 110% profit for me. That's crazy. Like all profit. Like I didn't I didn't have any investment except for time. That's some shit. But what's 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 so dope like what's so dope about this story? Like from going, like I said, going from twenty six thousand a year to a millionaire within three years. But the first thing you said was you took time to fix your mindset first. Yeah, that my brand is mindset, mindset matters. matters. Like I, like I stand on this shit, boy. Like I, when I say I stand behind this shit, like what Frank Lucas say, boy, this shit is like Coca Cola, boy. Like nigga, I'm standing on this shit with everything that I believe in. It's times where I'm like in a whole nother state somewhere on the elevator in the hospital, a doctor be like, man, I love your hoodie, I love your shirt. Like you know what I mean? Just people recognize this shit, and that's why. I kind of created the brand because it's like me putting positivity back into the universe without having to say nothing. Motherfuckers know what it is when they see when this. They see it, like, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, oh, facts. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, motherfuckers see it. Facts. Mindset matters more than anything, any shit. Fuck getting some money. Fuck, you know what I'm saying? Buying real estate. Fuck starting a business. Fuck all that. Get your mind right first. And then when you do that, you'll be able to excel and be amazing at anything. But if your mind ain't right, like, you're going you gonna to squander everything as soon as you get it. As soon as you get it. it that's facts, bro. It goes back to what uh, Byron was talking about when he said, when he was broke he was still happy and he probably was still learning and acquiring information because you know like even like personally when i was fucked up when i was broke i still for whatever reason i just knew like i'm finna have you, a bag so it's like it's something like when you when you gonna be somebody it's something in you even when you ain't that person yet where you just know like i i know like it, yes. it ain't right now but i know deep down in me like i'm supposed to be like, I'm one of them niggas. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's nothing that you can tell me to make me not think 
I'm not one of them niggas. I don't mm. give a fuck what my circumstances are. I don't give a fuck if I'm sleeping on this mattress on the floor. I don't give a fuck if I'm eating noodles every night, nigga. I am still one of them niggas. And as long as I'm breathing and walking and capable, I'm going to show you and you're going to see it at some point. It might not be right now. It might not be tomorrow. But just know, my motherfucker, they coming. Like, you know what I'm saying? And when it comes, it's going to be a flood. Like, because you stayed down. You no, know what I mean? And that's how that go. Like, bro, like... I struggled for years trying to figure this shit. I watched my homies become millionaires when we was 22 years old. Right. Like, my other homie co-signed. This nigga done produced 40 million platinum records like Rihanna, Big Sean, Justin Bieber. Like, these niggas making hits, going to the NBA finals. All that, I'm on the sideline watching this shit. Like, <laughs> yeah. like and it wasn't no hate or nothing. It's just like, right. God, yeah. when is going to be my turn? <laughs> right. Like, when? <laughs> but it's just like, man, just stay down. Your stay time down. stay down. Your time coming. Stay down. And now, shit, I'm advising my homies on how to take care of their money. I'm advising celebrities on how to, you know what I'm saying, go get property, how to qualify for property, how to utilize their money the right way and leverage credit and all of these different things. So it's like, man, like the tables turn, man. Like you just gotta <laughs> like really like stay down. Like how you ever finish if you keep starting over? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you won't ever finish if you keep starting over. That's right. I think staying down is hard for a lot of people just because that outside noise. Hell yeah. And then some people get into situations where they might have a couple children with the outside noise, yep. with the finances. You yep. got to pay bills where yep. it's like, fuck, I can't stay down no yeah. more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, in, in those situations, what what do you do? You got to figure it out, man. Got like, it. It, ain't, it ain't no excuses. Like, bro, like, I had two daughters. Like, you know what I'm saying? Bills to pay, all that shit. I had to put my pride down. A lot of times, I, it be, like, people pride, bro. Like, I had to put my pride down, go and get a the, the, the most basic job I can get to, like, start digging myself out of this hole. But that was a, <laughs> bro, that was an ego killer. Mm. Like, a major ego killer. But I needed that shit, though. Because I was riding too high on other motherfuckers success mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like nigga remove your homies like you fucked up and when i realized that it's like oh yeah nigga you gotta go out and get on your own you, your own. you know what i'm saying like you gotta get on your own now because at the end of the day you see how this shit going you know what i'm saying and um when i realized that it was just like all right bet like and i made a promise to god like man like you dig me out of this shit you get me out of this shit I'm going to help every single person that I come across, you know what I'm saying, with whatever I know because You're doing it. I see the power of this information that I have, you know what I'm saying? And the crazy thing is everybody don't do what I do. Like, this shit, like, that I'm teaching, like, is rare. Like, and my homie Andre Hatchett told me that. He pulled me to the side one day. He's like, Dre, he's like, you need to stop talking about just general real estate. You need to stop talking about the stock market. He's like, nigga, niche down the knacker. He was like, NACA is a program that everybody needs to know about. And you're the only person that I know that has been successful with yep. this program. You've done it twice. You have the whole play. He is like, nigga, niche down to NACA, focus on NACA, teach people how to be successful with NACA. And since then, it's been like mm -hmm. to the moon. Mm -hmm. like, Tell, talk about the story because you told me this, this story before. And it just came to my mind about when you quit your job. Oh. <laughs> you know what I'm about to <laughs> You know what I'm about yeah, to say. Yeah, tell yeah, tell yeah. the so, story. So I was at the telemarketing company, right, man? And like I have I put years into this place, bro. Like seven years. Like I like I say, when I when I came out of, you know, my rap career, whatever the case may be, this is this was the first place I went, man. And um I gave these people hours. I'm talking about 50, 60 hour a week sometimes, overtime, like just the top seller in the company, all that shit, right? And after a while, you know, I had got my first property by then. So, like, you know, I'm comfortable. I'm walking around them up with my chest out. Like, you know, I got an Audi. I'm driving a better car than the old and shit. So, you know, they trying to enforce these rules on me, bro. And I'm like, I'm the top seller in the company. Like, I'm busting with the sales. But they're like, yeah, we got a new owner now. And they don't like how you do the script or whatever the case may be. But I'm like, man, fuck y'all new owner. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm winning. And, uh, you know, after so many warnings, bro, like, they pulled me in the office, you know what I'm saying? Because I had been warned probably four or five times before this. And uh, <laughs> they pulled me in the office, and it's like, man, Andre, this is super unfortunate. You know, we've been talking to you about this or whatever the case may be. But, you know, 
you know, upper management finally decided we're going to have to let you go or whatever. You've been a great asset to the team, whatever the case, for all these years. You've been the number one producer or whatever. But unfortunately, you know, they want to let you go and move forward. So I was cool with that because I knew I was straight. Like, I'm, right. I'm good. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't worried about this. I got my property. I got cash flow on top of me after I bought my property. Bro, I stayed at that job. So I had saved all Same. my bread. Like, you know what I'm saying? And, um... I'm leaving, you know, packing up my stuff or whatever. And like I said, I've been at this job for like seven years, nigga. I've been, so I like, I got friends and shit, like good relationships. So I'm walking around saying bye to my people like, man, they just let me go. They're like, no, man, they fired you. Man, this lady come up to me and grabbed me on my shoulder and was like, yeah, you can't be doing that. You got to go. I'm like, Denise, get your bitch ass <laughs> off me. Like, I said this shit loud, G. Like, I'm, I'm up. And by this point, I'm furious. Like, why are you touching me? Like... Why, I'm already like, you know what I'm saying, I leave emotional because I got to leave my homies and shit like, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, why? I'm like, get your bitch ass off me. And then too, I had just came back from lunch. So I had a, a, a Wendy's red fruit punch in my hand. And as she grabbed me, I'm like, get your bitch ass off me. I turned around. I started walking out. I'm like, fuck all y'all. Everybody in this motherfucker week. I, boy, when I say I cocked that motherfucker back, like I cocked the, I cocked the pop bottle back and they got a big ass white wall. And I was like, <laughs> that motherfucker had red fruit punch all over the wall. And I walked out. Then when I hit the door, like, I dipped to my car, though, because I thought they was going to call the police. Right. I got up out of there like, nah, nigga, you got to go. You bogus as hell. But that shit felt so good, good, though. Like, that shit felt amazing. Like, nigga, if you want to ever leave a job, oh, boy, this is the way to do it. <laughs> Oh my god, dog. Yeah, that sh man. That shit had me crying when yeah, you told me that, that shit, That shit was epic, man. And um, and from there, like, my life has been nothing but great since, man. man. Like, you know what I'm saying? I was able to go, like I said, help my girl at the time get more property. I began to, you know, grow my businesses, start my mindset, matters brand, create content around what it is that I do, start teaching people about the NACA program. In turn, me telling my story has blossomed into an amazing, an amazing journey of building networks of friends, doing the biggest podcasts in the world, meeting the dopest people in my industry, collaborating with the dopest people in my industry. Like, you know what I'm saying, bro? Like, so you, this shit has done you wonders. That, yeah. That star. That, that star that I knew I always He's was. Doing, you know exactly. what I'm saying? And um, it just took, you know, a, a process and a progression that God had to take me on in order for me to get there. And when I look back, how everything played out, Zay, it's crazy because it's like, all right, cool. I used to be mad because when I was younger, I was adopted, right? Mm -hmm. I was taken away from my mom and dad because they were affected by the drug epidemic in the late 80s and early 90s. But I was blessed enough to be adopted into my own family. And that kind of shit used to have me so fucked up and frustrated and like on some land. Why this shit going on with me? Like, why I got to deal with this kind of shit? Like, and, and looking back, it was like, man, I, God talking to me, like, I had to take you out of that situation, bring you out here with your auntie. That way, you got these relationships with your friends who took you on a journey that you would have never, ever been able to go on, uh, never able to been able to meet these guys had this not happened. In addition to that, Shannon introduced you to Kiyoki. Kiyoki told you about the NACA program. The NACA program has essentially changed your life and put you where you are right now. So all of, the, all of these things that happened to you in the past, they needed to happen in order for you to become the person that you became. And I'm just like, God, you're yeah. cold-blooded. You are amazing. Real talk. You are amazing the way you do these things. And all the stuff that I went through, it molded me to be strong. It molded me to be intelligent. It molded me to be consistent. It molded me to be persistent. It molded me to be helpful. Like, those pain points and all of those triggers... They're not that no more. They're, they're, they're motivation. They're testimonies now. You know what I'm saying? Because I look at things different. I have a whole different mindset. I'm not a victim anymore. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, I'm a kill out here. I'm a right. beast out here. Like, nigga, it ain't nothing you can't tell me that I can't do. I went through all that shit. Made it out of the streets of Chicago. Boy, nigga, it's up. Super like, up. <laughs> like, what? Real talk. Like, for real, for real. Like, so a lot of stuff, that's why I be seeing, that I be seeing on the internet, and I be hearing niggas talking, like, y'all niggas so foo-foo, like, y'all would've never made it where I'm from, boy. Never. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, y'all wouldn't have made it on the South Side. Y'all wouldn't have made it in Maywood. Like, it just wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been a good look for y'all out West. Like, you know Not what I'm all. saying? Like, just... Like, cause y'all energy off. Like oh. y'all niggas garbage. Y'all niggas be hating. Y'all niggas be comparing. Like it's just mm -hmm. like we don't do that shit. Where I'm from, bro. Like we hustle. We grind. Like we real niggas. Let's stay like, out the way. You know what I'm saying? Stay the fuck out the way. Like Byron was talking about a lot of stuff. Like 
we don't even do because we know better. Like, I'm not mm -hmm. flossing. I ain't flodging. Like, nigga, my money is in them bricks, in them properties. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm going to flodge. I can't no nigga come rob me for those. Can't no nigga come take them off my neck. None of that kind of shit. Like, nigga, you want this shit? Nigga, I could teach you how to get it. That's the only way you're going to get this shit from me. That's game. <laughs> no, that's good. Like, that's you know what I'm saying? That's good like, for real. That's, so that make a nigga the street niggas even want to fuck with you. Cause facts. like nigga, you got some shit that I want. And the only way that I can get it is if I come be cool with you, nigga. Like click like, that up. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like a nigga can't take nothing from me. <laughs> no, that's game, bro. For real. No, that's, that's and this 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 my uh this my final question I, I got for you. Similar thing I asked Byron is somebody that's in your position when you was at when you was at that job with none. Before you even knew about the NACA program, they yeah. like, man, what the fuck I'm going to do? Yeah. What's your best piece of advice for them right now to get their life moving in that direction they wanted in? Man, bro, like, block out all the noise. All the bitches, all the homies that's trying to get out and kick you, all the distractions. Like, focus on what it is you need to do to become the best version of you for you and your family. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, that's the only thing that's going to get it because a lot of times we get so caught up in what other motherfuckers doing, looking at other people's success. Like, yeah, I want to be like them. I want to get the bad bitches like them. I want to do this like them. I want to drive the fast cars like them. But at the end of the day, fuck them. Worry about you. That's the only way that you're going to be able to become the person that you want to become is if you focus on you. When you so worried about another motherfucker, you can't do the things that you need to do to help yourself to become a better person, to change your mindset, to get your bag up. Like, you too worried about what another motherfucker doing. Nigga, like, turn the TV off. You know what I'm saying? Put the phone down. Pick up a book. Go on YouTube and watch some educational information. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Do some shit that's going to actually change your life for the better and make you a better nigga and a real nigga out here. Like, an actual real nigga. Not <laughs> no shit that's going on in the streets. Like, a man that has integrity. A man that do what he say. A man that take care of his family a man that's going you know what I'm saying like ride when he's supposed to ride and learn how to shut the fuck up and sit down when he's supposed to sit down like you know what I'm saying like those are the things that you need to be focused on and paying attention to not the distractions man starve the fucking distractions man feed your focus hey you can't any better than that man but before I let you go man I want to tell you this long overdue, so I appreciate yeah, you flying facts, out facts. to get this done, yeah, bro. Like, yeah. I really, really appreciate that. We're going to have to do it again. Yeah, man. I also, plug in all your stuff where people can follow you, buy merch, become a, 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 a student of yours, yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah, man. I got I got a lot of stuff going on. I got merch, Mindsets Matter. You know, click the link in my bio, visit Books. my website. My book, Renaissance is Five Step Guide on Getting Your Shit Together. That deals in mindset before there's real estate, before there's money, before there's a stock market, man. Learn how to get your shit together. And all of the women that you want, all of the money that you want, all of that shit gonna be attracted to you. You ain't gonna ever have to chase a motherfucking thing. Um, in addition to that, man, um, all of my courses are also in the link in my bio or at my website, www therenaissanceu.com and also man my monthly webinar man it go crazy navigate NACA man while I teach y'all my entire play you know what I mean I teach you the mindset you need to have I teach you the hurdles that you're gonna run into like everything that you need to be successful through the NACA program that's a one-stop shop so if you're interested in the program man shoot me a DM or go to my Instagram page and click the link in my bio and it'll take you right to my webinar link navigate NACA and it's a low ticket item for an extremely high value right. product, mm. a high value product. You're spending $27 and I'm teaching you how to go get a 300, 400, 500, up to a million dollar product. You know what I'm saying? So the turnaround, the ROI on your investment on that is really yeah, like, that's endless. like endless. Yeah. So yeah, man, like, you know what I mean? Click the link in bio. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it's going to be in the show me. notes. It's going to be in the show. I'm going to put that link in the show notes as well. So Tap in, man. Yes, for sir. sure. Tap yes, in. Sir. To that, yes, bro. sir, man. I appreciate you having me. This was real cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, this was dope. We're going to do it again. And, and then wrapping up for those, y'all can follow me on all platforms at Xavier C. Miller. And you can follow Millionaire Mindsets on all platforms as well. And this all this all I have for y'all on this week's episode of Millionaire Mindsets. See you guys next week. Peace. Gotta get your brain right if you're trying to make a million dollars If you ain't gonna do it for yourself, then do it for your mama Only stay surrounded by them people if you know they solid Elevate your hustle up today to double up your profit Trying to learn some game, Xavier y'all gonna talk about it No Deanna, speak that shit that everybody vouching Ain't no more excuses valid, get up off the couch and get up in your bag To your bank account, need an accountant